hello class uh, we are almost towards the end of this chapter fine only thing that is left out is a little bit of practice required from the chapter topic list because i told you the list is also there in this chapter and although we have done list in class 11 so let us just quickly go through this we have already started that i will just discuss one or two questions very quickly with you fine some of them i will solve but uh, some of them you got to solve by yourselves also because i i'm sure you don't need my help in solving those questions okay because cvsc questions are normally towards the easier side so i hope uh, some questions you will manage very easily uh, handling by yourself now in that case you have to solve one or two problems today or tomorrow and show it to me quickly though i give you the prep only the weekends but you got to try it out very fast okay in a day or two so that we can close down this chapter and move on to the next chapter uh there is a question given here by this was a little weird question and i solved it also in a slightly different way little unusual way uh, that's why i have done it in the board okay what is said like uh, you have to write a function where there is a list given to you and what you have to do is if you find the list elements are numeric in nature now we know that in a list we can have numeric elements in the same list another element can be non numeric that is alpha numeric also okay so imagine there is a list given to you like this 12 raman aman 30 this kind of list are very much possible so they are saying from this list when you go through this list basically if you find a numeric element then you your display should be the numeric element should be printed twice okay and if it is an alpha numeric element then what you have to do that alpha numeric element should be followed by a star that is what you are given to do okay now i wrote a function here called processing i did not take any parameter here fine right? because the function the question said actually it, it can be done different ways if you take a parameter here uh, which identifies the list there is no problem no harm in that but i did it in a slightly different way because the question says for a given list now for a given list i can take within a function this is also okay if you take suddenly a list itself here and if you write p here as a parameter in that case do not write this kind then also it is okay so both the ways it is fine okay now what did i do i went through the elements of the list you know how to do it for i in p at which means every element at a time present in p now here i have used the method of try and accept try and accept in connection with exception handling we have done in class 11 okay what was exception handling like exception handling are some kind of errors which occurs there are some kind of errors which we get to see which occurs during the running of a uh, program and if a, if you are expecting a, uh, an error to happen then what you can do is we can resolve the error and we can take a remedial action that is if error happens then what will happen the program execution will stop now without stopping the program execution if an error comes i can divert the program control to do something else okay so that is why we use try and accept right so under try we write the portion where you are expecting an error to take place and under the accept we write the portion which will happen which will take place if an error is encountered i'm repeating one second though you have done it in class 11 i'm just repeating once we write under the try portion under the try we can accept both of the blocks under the try block we write the portion of the program where we are expecting an error to happen it may happen may not happen okay and under accept block we write the portion which basically we want to execute if an error is encountered if a, if an error is seen then what will happen the solution is provided by the accept block okay So what I have done, look at this. I have made use of the function is alnum. Is alnum function you remember? Is alnum returns the value true if every character present. If i is i can be here basically I wrote here i. I is basically you are representing an element. It can be one character. I can be multiple characters also. 
Okay. Now here obviously I means it's a multiple character because elements are no, none of them are one character. Okay, it's a word or a number. Fine. So I here represents basically a string. Ideally, it should represent a string. That means when we use alnum, we can write a b c d applied on is alnum applied on this function. That is how we use it. Okay. That means it, it will return a value true if every character present in it is an alphanumeric character. Alphanumeric means either every character will be an alphabet or it will be a digit, nothing else. But on the other hand, imagine if I write 1, 2, 3, 4, 1,234 and is an alphabet. If we try to use it this way, then the system will generate an error. Because alphabet is not supposed to be used in context with a number. It is supposed to be used in complex with a string. Okay. So obviously, here what happens when 12 is read, we can make out that an error will be encountered. But when an element Raman will be represented by I, then there is no problem. Then Alman will work perfectly all right. So basically, what I used here, the property which I used, that sometimes that error will be encountered, sometimes again the error will not be encountered. Error will be encountered if an element like number is there and an, an error will not be encountered if it is a, a string or an alphanumeric multiple. So what will happen at first only look at this 12 will be read by i so an error will be encountered because I told you this way alum function cannot be used. So since an error has occurred what will happen this try block will pass it to the solution block that is Excel block. So what will happen 12 and 12 twice 12 will be printed. And in other cases like Raman, Raman will be perfectly an alphanumeric quantity. It doesn't have any numeric value. So what will happen in this case, the return result of this will be true. When we write if i dot is alum, we are meaning to say if i dot is alum function double equal to true. This is same as, we need to say as if, if a c dot is alum. Can be written like fully like this also, but it shortcut me like it this way. So if it is alphanumeric quantity, then what's happening? That element is followed by a star. Okay, slightly different kind of a problem. That's why I discussed here. Okay, I will give you some. I will uh, tell you some easy problems also, but those easy problems I will not discuss here in the class. I will directly give you as a prep. You just take. I don't think it will take more than five ten minutes for you to do. Okay. Uh, another question I wrote here on the board, uh, it is this one. What is happening here? Look at this. They said that a nested list is given to you. Okay, a nested list having uh, to represent basically a double dimension array. Okay, a nested list which is representing a double dimension array having same number of rows and columns. Okay. Now, say this kind of one list is given to you. Fine, one list you have taken, nested list you have taken to represent this particular format, I mean this particular double dimension array. So once you have done this, what you have to do, you have to display all the elements which are appearing along the sides of this diagram. That means 8, 4, 2 and 3, these four elements will be missing because they are not appearing along the sides of this square. That is what was the question. Okay. So basically it is, it will not be very difficult for you to solve, okay. In a function we can take a list which will be a nested list, let, let us assume that. And that has the same number of rows and same number of columns. Okay, now in, in, in fact if we look at this, in fact if I look into this particular uh, double dimension array and nested list, look at this, this is my row number 0, okay. And this is my column number 0, this one is my column number 0. My row number zero, right? And look at this very very carefully. This is my row number three, zero, one, two, three, and this is my column number three. So basically, one thing is very obvious. Look at the elements. I told you whenever you solve any question or list where double dimension array somehow is connected, always think of the location, the locations you write down. That means this one particularly, if you see, his address is basically zero zero. His address is 0, 1. 
this not at this location actually, so 0, 2, 0, 3. Similarly, this one is 1, 0, and this one is, this one is supposed to be 1, 3. 2, 0, 2, 3. 3, 0, whatever. I am finishing at 3, 3. So, what is happening? Look at this. We are printing the elements only if the i value, i, if I take to represent the rows, those values are like if i value is 0 and i value is 3, then I am doing it. And if column value is 0 and the column value is 3, then also I am printing it. I am repeating it. If the row value is, look at this, 0 and row value is 3, then you are printing the elements. And if the column value is 0 and the column value is 3, then also you are printing the elements. So, if just writing a simple if condition, you can simplify it. So, I am just doing it here. For example, I will not write 3 obviously because a square array is given, same, same number of rows, same number of columns. It can be 3, it can be 4, it can be 5, it can be any dimension. So, basically what I will do, the space here is really small. So, I am not writing those def and all, those are there. Okay, the function heading is there, imagine. I am just writing the broken code here. Uh, so, first I will calculate the length, fine. I can straight away write the length of, imagine my list is P here, fine. So, I will write the length of P. I will get to know how many rows are there and that many columns are supposed to be there because it's a square array. Now, what I will do for I in French, set two loops, 0 to P and for J in French, So what will happen this way? One loop will represent basically the rows. Okay, I loop will represent the rows basically, and J loop will represent columns in a particular row. So now what will happen? Okay, this if you just put a simple if condition, it will be quite big. It may not fit in here. I might continue writing in the next line. So indentation will be slightly disturbed, but I hope you will understand what I mean this way. That if I double equal to zero, look at this. If I double is zero. Or if i value is double equal to 3, fine. And there is no space here, so I am forced to write here. Okay, or j double equal to 0 or j double equal to 3. Look at this, only in these four cases, what you are doing is you are printing the element. So printing the element means you definitely write print your e was the least and you write i and j. Okay. What you can do is you can print a little bit, you can give a little bit of space also by doing that. And we go into this dependent. It's a space, okay, it's a little bit of space. So if this condition is followed, then you print this. Else, else part of this would be, okay, what we do, we will just print a little bit of space so that this, when it doesn't satisfy the condition. For example, when you mean to say 8, 4, 2, and 3, it is just prints a space. Okay, so that how are you going to write? We will write, I am just erasing this and writing here. We will else part will be print a space and end equal to space. End equal to space is just to space out every element from the other. Like 5 and 6 there is a 6 and 7 in between, 6 and 7 there is a But in this case what is happening when 8 comes, 8 is read by this 2. Okay, it prints a space. And then automatically the another gap is already there, maybe it should be there. Okay, space and the next space. That's why two spaces are created here. Fine, I will give you the coding in the notes tonight. I hope you will be able to understand that.